Finances in your new company are another matter, and it's worth mentioning, but can't be fully described here for many reasons. Firstly, the whole issue is too complex. There are lots of books about it. Secondly, there are big differences between countries, and what's relevant in, say, the UK might be different in a country such as Poland. Here we'll try to give you some general hints, and if you're interested, you can find out more specific information. Let's start with the most difficult one. If you don't have a regular full-time job at the same time that you start your own business, you need to be prepared for a few months that won't generate any income. Sometimes there are lots of investments to make, so you should have money that would allow you time to survive at least three to six months without an income. Otherwise you'll be stressed, overtired and willing to make compromises that you really didn't want to make. To help solve the previous problem, you can look for extra funding for young entrepreneurs that's available in many EU projects or even in local government initiatives. Also, many countries have places with preferable development conditions for startups and new companies. You just need to look around. Here's one of the most important pieces of advice. Even if your form of business activity allows you to keep your private and company's money together, it's strongly advised that you don't do that. To manage the monthly budget of the firm and your personal one, you should have two separate bank accounts and pay yourself a salary every month. It will prevent you from becoming confused and ending up with a mess on your accounts. Let's think about savings. Again, we can't stress enough how important this part is. In your private life, you should have savings to make you feel safe and prepared for unexpected circumstances. The same rule should be applied for your company. You'll never know how many clients you'll have to meet next month or what you'll have to repair or buy. It's good to be prepared. This scheme shows what the division of each entrepreneur's finances should look like. There's a special place for your taxes. Common practice is to have two sub-accounts on your company's bank account, one for VAT and the other for income tax. Put money into these accounts every time you earn something. Don't feel attached to it and don't touch it. In this case, you then won't have to nervously look for savings in times of monthly or quarterly tax returns. Taxes, as well as savings, merit a special consideration. As an entrepreneur, you're probably able to include some relevant purchases in the expenses of your business. Think about what forms of business activity are the most profitable in your case. What kind of contractors should you use? Or maybe you should start doing your annual tax reports with somebody else. Do you have kids? Are you involved in charity actions? All these and many other factors might help you to optimise the amount of taxes you pay. Remember, we're not talking about illegal or morally ambiguous actions, which are more similar to stealing than optimising profits. We mean all of the legal and commonly used practices that our law allows us to use. This is important, especially at the beginning of your business. You'll have a hard enough time making profit. Do some research, make an effort and save money. Of course, not everyone's good at maths, so this leads us to more advice. Find good specialists. Using the service of an accountant is not a big expense nowadays. There are many internet accounting offices that offer good quality for a decent price. When it's hard to find a really good one, ask around. Do you have any friends or family members that are entrepreneurs? Ask them. Recommendations are the best way to find a good specialist. If your income increases, you might think about consulting your tax optimization with a tax advisor. This is the same rule as before. Ask for a good one. Don't expect them to be cheap. Good professionals will cost you, 
but they will also contribute to your financial well-being.